Roberts back here. Less, less eventful this time than it was the last time. <laughs> 19 points, 10 rebounds, first career double double. Also had five assists and two steals. Uh, Dennis, if you want to go first, and then you guys can just alternate back and forth. Anthony, congratulations on the win. Mm -hmm, appreciate uh, it. <coughs> obviously, you guys brought in seven new players. Mm -hmm. I feel like these guys are beginning to gel as a group. Yeah, that's one thing Coach has been um, harping on for since we got here. Is like we are team full of transfers, but we also experience. So just us playing hard and playing with each other in practice is helping us a lot. How much did those, those first two games, did those first two games help you guys come together? Oh, yeah, most definitely, most definitely. It, it most definitely did. It, it, it brought everybody A game for sure. Yeah, I, that's something Coach been preaching all year again, too. It's like, we're a small team. Like, Jaden's our only five men, him and Alex. So, Coach been preaching that we have to help them on the board. So, that's what we've been doing. And, you know, without Elijah playing these last two games, mm -hmm. how much have you yourself felt like you have to step up? Um, not, not, not as much because we have so much talent on this team. Like, everybody, like, one go down, it's the next man up. Like, we have so much talent, I feel like we can go far. Yeah, it most definitely is. We playing a lot, a lot more faster than we were. So yeah, I feel like it's picking up a lot. Thank you. Uh, do you feel like the pace in your that you played with, the tempo you played with, got them out of their game? Um, I would say yeah, because that was one thing coach was preaching again uh, that they they bigs was slow. Like our guards can outrun them, even our bigs can outrun their bigs. So that was one thing coach was um, harping on was, was getting up and down the floor. Uh, yeah, yeah, because they they a team that like to do a lot of back cuts, and coaches preaching on that like we we can't let them get back cuts. And coach kept preaching to us that um they was gonna try to back cut every time, even five to six times. But that was their offense, and we did a good job of uh, keeping them from doing it. Um, he he definitely turned us up off that. Like he like he a big energy guy, so, and we know what Tyke can do. So when he did that, it, it, it's normal, but it's also he, it bring a lot of momentum to our team. If it's normal, do you expect him to make those kind of plays? Yeah, 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 for sure. Tyke like his athletic ability is is like off the charts. Like it's crazy. Thank you, sir. Yeah, sales block in the post late. Uh, Ethan, you can uh, you can start. With after playing so many close contests lately, how does it feel to finally get a dominant blowout win tonight? Um, it feels good. You know, a lot of these games are going to come down to the wire uh, last few minutes, but it feels good to, you know, pull away early and then have everyone get a chance to get in the game and show what they can do. What was the most impressive aspect about the way you guys played tonight? Mm, the fact that we played together, really. Like, we really moved the ball. We had a lot of assists. You know, once everybody gets touching the ball, it's easy to score, get the defense moving. And then you had your best scoring game of the season so far. Do you feel it's like, you know, you're moving yourself back coming off like injury in the offseason? Um, well, I did break my finger uh, not too long ago. So I was kind of coming off of that. But, I mean, it's not really an excuse. I just need to get back in my game, and I feel like I'm doing that recently. <clears throat> How close do you feel like you're, you are to playing at 100%? Um, well, right now my back's kind of nagging at me, so I'm about 80 now. But once I get past this, uh, I should be back 100% full go. And on a skewed same thing, today, uh, Anthony, because you have so many new guys, what has the learning curve been like for, for this group? Um, really? Uh, people are just figuring out their role on this team. Like, their role on the other team may have been different. They may have needed to score more. They may have been just defense maybe. But people really figuring out what they can bring to this team every single day and what we need them to bring to this team. That's really helping us gel together. I know there's a, there's a few games left before conference play starts, but how do you feel going – right now, how do you feel about – how do you feel about this group's chances going into conference play? I feel like we're definitely trending in the right direction, 
and uh, I feel like today we took a big jump, and then we just need to keep adding the days on, keep getting better and better. Thank you, guys. Forward after an 80 57 win, second straight game scoring 80 or more. Still using the stat. Yeah. Six and three there you go. Here. So, coach, go from a couple of shoot and then we'll uh, go back and forth. Well, I, I thought that uh, offensively we, we played at a pretty high level. I thought we really shared the ball. I mean, we had 13 assists, only seven turnovers. Ball seemed to move well, found guys in good spots. And, uh, you know, we've got some really talented offensive guys individually. I feel like we're starting to figure each other out the last few games, and we have really, uh, really the last three games. I mean, if you pulled the Fairfield numbers, we were outstanding on offense. We just couldn't get stops. So, um, uh, you know, this is a team that offensively can be uh, dynamic and fun to watch. It really can. So hopefully we can continue the role of 80 points, keep Ethan happy. That's the plan. Yeah, I do. You know, this is a team that, that had one of the more um, just difficult preseasons that, that I've been a part of. And that sounds absurd because coming off of a COVID year, but we had so many guys that are key guys that were out for extended periods of time. And so if you're not in in the preseason, it gets hard. Like, how do I get used to playing with you? We're old but the team is inexperienced. So we have veteran guys, but anyone who's ever played or is a student of the game or coached, you know that basketball comes down to five of us making each other better and having roles and a rhythm of offense. First few games, I mean, we were we were a train wreck, and the last three games we've really moved the ball. And some nights you're going to miss shots. I just liked – I liked nearly every shot we took tonight with the exception of – you know, a handful. And if you're going to be in a game where you take 61, I mean, they're not going to all 61 be the best shots in the world. So I, I, I do think we're trending in the right direction. I think guys are starting to figure each other out. I think our chemistry off the floor has continued to emerge and get better. And then the on the floor is just going to show up, you know, through that, I think, at times. Uh, very accurate statement. So what they try to do is they execute their offense at a high level. But their offense isn't about quick shots. It's, ba it's backdoor cuts. Like for us to only have given up two backdoor cuts through the game is unbelievable because we have been a team that has gotten back cut historically in the few years that, you know, I've been here. We, with, I, we've been guilty of that. Um, and that's a team that just tried to – I mean, if you went through the film, they probably tried 150 back cuts and we only got burnt – three times total and two during the, when the game was still competitive. So I, I, I think that that speaks to our attention to detail and following scouting reports and being more mature uh, and, and give them credit because the way they play, they don't get away from it. And they're fine if the shot clock gets down to 15 or 10 or 5. They still continue to execute their offense. They don't just throw it to their best player and try to like make have him make a play which is like what we would do when the shot clock gets down is we, the ball's going to find Anthony, the ball's going to find Jalil, and we're going to ball screen for him or we're going to clear it out, and they're going to go have to make a play. Um, so systems are, are very different, and um, what they're go really good at what they do, and they, they just they don't speed up. And I thought that they stuck with what they were doing, and it wasn't really a very high possession game. So for us to score 80 points is, is pretty good execution, but it's because of the low turnovers. Having played a lot of close games recently, how does it feel with the new rollout of Brandon? Well, Ethan, I'm going to tell you what's crazy about coaching. With, with like, five minutes to go in the game, we're talking about, like, subbing a guy or two in, and we're still in a panic. Like, we don't – you know, you're just, like you, – you, you look up there, and it's like, okay, we're up 20, but there's still five minutes left. You know, crazy things happen in college basketball. Teams get hot from three. They shoot a lot of threes. They're capable. You saw at the beginning of the half um, – we're not at the beginning of the half, but it, kind of in that mid part where we got it back to 20. It was 20. They whittled it down to, like, 12 – it got back to 20, and then they banged two threes in a row, and it's 14, and we didn't score. We got fouled. We made one out of two. So you just feel like, well, if they throw in another two threes in a row, this thing could be nine. You know, So those things are always going through your mind. You're trying to play through the whole deal. So from a coaching perspective, I don't think that I, we felt any sense of uh, relief. I think the players you know, are trying to keep them engaged because we've had a – we got a team that has majority of our roster uh, are offensive guys and they're scorers, and they were scorers other places. Well, you don't beat anyone bad by just scoring. You have to string stops together. 
And most of our locker room has their role somewhere else or even here has been put the ball in the basket for us, put the ball in the basket for us. And you can't blow people out like that. You, you get a 23-point win by getting stops. And st- you, the stat sheet would show we got a ton of stops. Um, I mean, to hold them on the low, in the you know, mid-30s from the field, that's our best effort of the season uh, by 10 percentage points. Uh, so I think we did a lot of really good things uh, today. And, and we just got to try to find a couple guys that will be kind of all about defense. I thought Tyler really was, was good. I thought he played really hard and he – fought through screens and at a higher energy level uh, than maybe he has at other times and that other guys did tonight. So I thought he sparked us. I thought Omar Hobway sparked us in the first half. We've got depth, but it's got to be, you know, defensive depth, if that makes sense. Well, probably. I mean, you know, Jalil's coming off an injury, so he, he just finally got back. And, and, and obviously when you can throw someone with, with what he's capable of, I mean, he shoots seven for 11, he has 16 points. He only played 27 minutes because we yanked him at the end of the game. I mean, if it's a close game, he plays another five minutes, he probably scores another five points. So, you know, I think Jalil was, was terrific off the bench. And then Tyler was great. Omar was great. And I really like what Alex Christie's doing for us right now. He's just giving us a big physical presence. He got called for a couple fouls. That's fine. He made a really nice move in the post, um, you know, on the jump hook, uh, got the foul line once. So he, he, Alex is our best screener, and it's not just because of size. It's because of a willingness that when he's in, he's just trying to get Anthony Roberts or Jalil open. That's his entire mindset. I'm going to get those guys open, and I'll trust that if I'm, you know, if I have a layup, they'll throw it to me. And if not, they're going to put so much pressure on the defense that we're going to either get to the rim or find a shooter. And if you really watch the game tonight, you saw when Alex was in, he really screened. He got, we were able to get downhill, and then we kicked it out opposite a lot of times where we either shot it or one more to the corner for wide-open jumpers, and those are all because of his screens. And then I'd be you know totally remiss if I didn't at some point mention Jaden Sales. Jaden Sales' defensive presence tonight was uh, you know the best it's been all year, what we need from him on a consistent basis and what he's capable of doing. I mean, he was the reason the game went from – hang around, maybe they have a chance to back to 20 because he blocked two or three shots. He, he, he forced two or three other misses. So, so what was Jalil's injury? I guess that's when it's still bothering him. No, I mean, it's, a, it's an ankle. I mean, I, you know, I, I think those things kind of bother you for a while, but he didn't – he looks fast to me. So, I don't know. You'd have to ask him. But he, he's, a, he's a special uh, kid and a special player. He wants to be out there. So, you know, he's not going to let a little pain keep him out for too long. But uh, – but he was great. He was great off the bench for sure. You guys had talked about guys coming in from other programs being able to score. How much of a task is it to get those guys to buy in to play defense? Well, it's a it's a big task, and it's also a big task to get them to pass the ball. I mean, if you watched our first couple games, um, our our passing was was non-existent, and now we're coming off three straight games of high assist totals, low turnover turn totals because we're getting more used to playing together we also totally scrapped offensively what we were doing um the, our base offense we we chucked out the window and um and, and went to uh more motion stuff with high lows and, and and screen roll and before we were doing a lot of space the floor dribble drive um and um you know not that people wouldn't know but i mean we we the dribble drive stuff is what villanova runs so we called it wildcats after villanova unfortunately we put the wild in wildcats so we had to kind of get away from that especially you know like elijah's injuries are, is, a, is a significant thing for us i mean we prepared a certain way to have a certain group and now the group has changed so you have to play a different way we don't have as many drivers out there as we did when he was in so we, you know we made a, a structural change to what we're doing offensively and i, and I think that's really paid off i mean our offensive uh, uh, performances have been much better the last three. Good. Okay. Thanks, guys. Travel safe going home.